sensitive about what it's saying over and over again, my brother. We're out here for our people, right? Let me ask you a question. Do you love God? Now, you say you love God. What's your name, bro? Freddie? Freddie. You said you love God, right? Now, my next question is, how do you show that you love God? Say again? You pray, what else? You try to do the right thing. Now, do you know what the right thing is? Not all the time. Not all the time. So, that's what we're out here for, Freddie. We're out here to teach our people who they are and what the right thing is. Give me that. What's the right thing? Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. Let's show our brother where Freddie is the right thing. Because you said you love God, and you show you try to show him how you love him. This is how you show you love God. What's your name, bro? Bro, that just crossed the street. What's your name? Omar, Omar right? You got a humble spirit. I saw you from over there. Hey, so Freddie, this is what this is what it means to be right. This is what it means to do the right thing. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. So God said righteousness, or in order to do right, you have to keep the commandments. Omar, did you understand that? How we, as a people, supposed to do right, we got to keep God's commandments. You love God? Hey, Freddie, so now that you know that you say you love God, what is it you got to do to show that you love him? Do, do the right thing, right? And what's the right thing? Keeping his commandments. Right? So that's how you show that you love God. You keep his commandments. But the problem is our people don't know that. We have been destroyed. Give me that Deuteronomy 28 and 15 real quick. I'm going to show you something, right? Our history is in the Bible. Our condition that we're in in America today was prophesied in the Bible. When you look at our people today, right, what position do you see black, Hispanic, and natives in? Getting judged. Huh? Getting judged. Getting judged. What you mean by that? Elaborate. Their, their skin tone ain't a judgment. That's a blessing, actually. Us having melanin is a blessing. But we are getting judged. When you look in the uh, neighborhoods, right, don't you see us being in the, uh, 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 what's it called, the hood, the ghettos? You see our people occupying that. We selling drugs to one another. We don't respect our women. Our women don't respect us. This is what you see when you see the black community. That's judgment. You see this right here? You see this right here? This is judgment. The reason why we got judged is because we're God chosen people and we disobeyed him. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Who is this right here on this sign? That's the first person I ever see actually read the sign. So, but the image of the beast, right? Who do you actually, who is this pushed in America today? Who is this guy? The so called Jesus. That's not the real Christ. But that was actually a real man. That's a painting of a real man. That image of that real man, Caesar Borges, was painted and pushed throughout the entire world right. and caused everybody in the entire world to believe that that's Christ. Right. But the Bible doesn't record that looking like Christ. You understand what I'm saying? You know what the Bible records Christ looking like? He records him looking like you. That's right. And you're, he looks just like you, dark skin, woolly hair. Now we're going to show you in the Bible. Read that. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So chapter 1 of Revelation, verse 1, is saying the revealing of Jesus Christ. We're going to see what Christ looks like. Jump over. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. The Bible says the hairs and hairs of Christ were white like wool. If the Bible is saying this, where did this image get this to say that this was the image of Christ? How did you even push this on the earth? If the Bible is saying he has white woolly hair like yours, that's woolly hair. That's the way Christ's hair was, except it was white. How do you get woolly white hair out of this? They changed it up. They changed it up and caused our people to worship that image. So now we won't look at them and won't revenge for the things that they did to us. You get what I'm saying? By us looking at this image and thinking that that's Christ, it will take away all the stuff that will take away all our memory of what they did to them. It will... It would cause us to forgive him for those things. Why? Because he looked like Christ. Christ is going to come and save us. When Christ coming back, he's going to get mad at me if I take revenge. You get what I'm saying? Read on. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So the reason why it says his eyes were the flame of fire is because he drunk wine in moderation. You think Christ drunk wine? Okay. What was his first miracle? Water into wine. So you don't think he partook in that? Christ was a moderate drinker. Give me that 31 and 27. Because ain't nothing wrong with drinking. 
He wasn't drunk. He was drinking. Let me show you what the Bible says about drinking. 31 and 27. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 31 and verse 27. Check it out. In verse 27, wine is good as life to a man. So the Bible records it. Wine is good as life. What's the scripture that Christ was called drinking? They, he, he came drinking of his blood and all that. Oh, that. He said, wine is good, right? To the Read it again. Wine is as good as life to a man. That's what the Bible says. The Bible itself says wine is good to a man. It's good as life, right? But uh, it's a stipulation to it. Read. If it be drunk moderately. It got to be done in moderation. You can't overly drink and get drunk. You understand what I'm saying? So Christ did drink wine. Hey, so did you know you may come from the children of Israel? My oh, brother, what's your name? Omar? So both of y'all name Omar. Okay, y'all praise me. Where you from? What's your ethnicity? Both y'all Somalian with the name Omar. That's crazy. So, give me that. Deuteronomy chapter, uh, uh, not Deuteronomy, uh, Isaiah 11 11. Was you able to find that scripture about Christ? 11 19. Read that real quick. So, like you said, right? Christ drunk wine. It was going to prove it out of the Bible. The reason why we know he drunk wine is because we understood that was his first miracle and it was prophesied in Genesis. Yeah. But he didn't get drunk. He drunk it in moderation. Read that. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 11, and verse 19. The son of man came eating and drinking. He said he came eating and drinking, right? Let's see if it's just talking about water or juice. Read. And they said, behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber. And a wine bibber. They got mad at because they saw Christ drinking, and they like, that's a wine bibber right there. Why would they call him that? Because they witnessed him drinking. Now give me Isaiah, I mean Genesis 49 real quick. To further show that Christ was drinking. That's why the Bible says his eyes was red. Like a flame of fire. Because when you drink, what happens to your eyes? Any amount of alcohol getting in your system, your eyes, why did your eyes turn to red? That's what happened to Christ. Let's read about the prophecy now. This is the book of Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. Yeah. His eyes shall be red with wine. His eyes shall be what? Red with wine. Christ's eyes was red with wine. He didn't get drunk. He drunk in moderation. So that shows you right there that Christ did drink wine. And that's why in Revelation it said his eyes was red with fire. Go back to Revelation real quick. His name is Montreal. Montreal. Hey, so uh, we just explained to uh, uh, Omar how Christ uh, did drink wine, right? Because a lot of our people think that that's a sin and it's all, they think all this evil stuff when we partake in wine. The Bible says it's good to life. But anyway, where you from, though? Mobile, Alabama. Mobile, Alabama. So you're from the South, right? So you ever heard that you might be an Israelite according to the Bible? How you hear about it? What's she saying? Huh? Okay, so do you know how slaves should relate to the Bible? I'm not really much into the Bible. I'm not really much Hey, that's a problem. That's a problem. The reason why I say that is because that's your history. You're not going to know who you truly are unless you get in the Bible. Because it records our history. It tells us who we are. I'm going to show you that this slave ship is in the Bible. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with... So it says, Lord will bring them into Egypt. Give me Egypt, right? You familiar with the children of Israel? And they came out of captivity. They came out of slavery, right? And when they was in slavery, where were they yet in slavery? They was in Egypt, though. Egypt was captivity for them. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to read it to you. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So when they were in Egypt, they read, give me a revelation, hold on, give me revelation 11 and 8. When they was in Egypt, they recognized Egypt as bondage, as slavery. So when God said, I'm going to take you back into Egypt, they didn't think the land and Pharaoh and all that. No, they thought bondage. They thought slavery because that was their status while they was there. And when they broke God's commandments, he said, okay, this is going to be your punishment. He didn't just say, go back into another land. No, the Egypt represented a state of being. Read that. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Sodom and Egypt. It was the great city. When we were dead, it was called Sodom, spiritually, Sodom and Egypt. Why Sod uh, Egypt? Because that's where it was slaves at. Spiritually, we identify Egypt as a state of being in servitude, slavery. Read, now go back to Deuteronomy 20, uh, 28 real quick. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. 
and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. All right, so you said, he said he was going to bring us to Egypt again. What was Egypt? Captivity. He's going to bring his children again into Egypt, right? Read. Again with ships. Stop. I'm going to bring my children again back into slavery by way of ships. When did that happen? Exactly. What people did that happen to? So who is that talking about? That's talking about our people. This is our history recorded in the Bible. That's right. That's why I said we have to go back to. So the, the reason why it's important, you know what I'm saying? Because we're going to walk around saying we're black people. We're going to call ourselves African American. You get what I'm saying? Black is the color of my pants. African American is two white men. Why don't we have an identity anymore? You get what I'm saying? The Bible records it. Read that 28 and verse 68 again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. What was your name again? Montreal, right? So once we came over here on those slave ships, right? What happened once we got off? Right back in captivity. Right, but like, I want you to tell me step by step. So we went off into them slave ships, right? The first thing that happened to us, how did we get on the plantation? We had to be auctioned out. Now we're about to read that in the Bible. Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Verse 68. Go back verse to 68. 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way, where else I spake unto thee. So when we went over out to, out from uh, Africa to Egypt, the Bible says we're never going to see our homeland again. Have you been back to Africa yet? Have you hugged your brother or your cousins and your uncles and them since you left them? You wouldn't even be able to recognize him if you went back, right? The Bible says, I'm going to take Montreal, and I'm going to send him over into captivity by way of ships, and he ain't never returned him back to his homeland again. Right. Right? Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there. And there, in the land of your captivity, ye shall be sold unto your enemies. We were sold unto our enemies. That's exactly what you just said. We was auctioned off. Pick a nigga right here. That's what happened to us. Right. But the thing is, we never knew that it was recorded in the Bible. We never knew our history was recorded in the Bible. Now that we understand that, who does that make us? These are the questions that we have to ask ourselves. We can't continue to walk around calling ourselves niggas and black and yes, African American. Right. Our history is deeper than that. Right. Our roots are way deeper than that. God called us the greatest people on the face of the earth. That's then right. why would he send us into captivity? We are the greatest people on the earth. Why do we have to suffer the greatest atrocity? You get what I'm saying? We got to look into this Bible. We can't just say we don't read it no more. We have to. Wait. This is where our salvation is. Read. For bond men. For bond men. That's slave men. For slave men. When we got off those ships, we were sold as slave men. You get what I'm saying? You can't deny that. That's actual facts. That's recorded and documented in history. Read. And bond women. And our wives and our mothers and our daughters were slave women. All that stuff, all these movies they make about it, they got it from the Bible. This was prophesied before it happened, so you can't deny that we are these people that the book is talking about. Right. Read. And no man shall buy you. That means no man will be able to redeem us. Think about it. You had Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, all these movies, SNCC, American, the AIM movement. All these different movie, movements to try to lift up us out of the conditions that we in, what happened to all our leaders? Huh? They all fell, but more importantly, they got assassinated. Right. Every leader that we had that wanted to improve the condition of our people was number one on the FBI list. J. Edgar Hoover said the greatest uh, enemy of, what is it? Of our, no, he greatest said the greatest. The, the greatest threat to America is black unity. Why? What's wrong with us coming together and being a, pe a nation of people? Why? It makes them look better. Okay, how can you fix something that's already broken? Right. How do you break something that's already fixed? Right. You know, how do you break a king? Right. How do you break a king? This is how you broke a king right here. So they, didn't want, they don't want black unity because they understand who we are. It ain't so much of a threat. It's the way it's supposed to be. They understand if we get unified, their time of ruling is coming to an end. Why? Because we're the sons of God and we're supposed to be ruling. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example.